Okay, this one's my newest one, and by no no means is it the best one. Um, I did try the larger vertical um, control surfaces for a backup control method. I do have uh, the old um, thruster method that I normally use on here as well. I only have two thrusters at the front to turn it. Um, there's a lot of wasted space on this thing, but I really wanted to test out these new angled um, bow pieces that I've made. I'm quite happy with how they turned out. I think they're pretty cool. The only problem is uh, the, the engine in the game doesn't quite handle it the way I thought it would. I thought it would, you know, the progressive angle would help with the water. In fact, it doesn't seem to really help with the water at all. I find that the 90 degree uh, flat front boat that I made, the Poseidon, was it just it just glides through the water like crazy like beautiful this thing it, it, even though it's shaped to I've shaped it the model to go through the water very smoothly it doesn't go through the water smoothly so there's a problem somewhere either with the game logic in uh, in the, uh, the the water or it, it's just a fluke I don't know anyways I'll cut back to this now just to show you how um, the control surfaces work. So the big uh, con vertical control surfaces you can see uh, that's full over. They're, they're like micro adjustments compared to the thrusters. So these are, are give some degree of control just in case the thruster gets knocked off I guess. But if you want to look at the thrusters and that's with almost no thrust. If I go full thrust on the thrusters, watch this. See? So that's with the thrusters. So now I'm in the water. Um, you're going to see right away that this thing is not as good as the other ship I've made. I'll fire up the motors. I'll start it at one third power just to get a feel for what it's going to do. Really, this is the first. This is probably the second time I've had this thing in the water, so I really don't know what's going to happen, but you're going to hear all kinds of noise underneath of it, and that's just the water impacting it. Uh, maybe it's not heavy enough. I really don't know what the problem is at, the t at this moment, but we'll see what it does. Let's get it up to two-thirds power. Try to keep it going straight while I increase power. So now we're up to 40. This one should be better actually because it's the newest one I've made, but I just, it, it's so finicky that I haven't had amazing tests with it. And this is probably the best test I've ever had with it. I'm at two thirds power. There she goes. Well, this is interesting. I'm going to increase power all the way. It's like it... It didn't like the back end of the boat. It likes a flat back end. Okay, I don't know what the world record is for uh, boats on the water, but I just hit 75 before this thing decided to take a crap. <laughs> <laughs> see all the <laughs> my parts are made out of styrofoam that's the secret you see <laughs> see all the styrofoam in there uh, that's the secret you got carbon fiber on the outside we got styrofoam on the inside and uh, that's what make the makes these pieces very very light and buoyant these pieces in here are about a ton each or a ton and a half each but these pieces here are like not even a quarter of a ton so it, it's very floaty but it can be disastrous going 74 I think that might be the world record for for water so even though this thing I would not take it on a long mission because I don't trust it um, I would take the Poseidon because it's larger it has better few it has it has better um, 
um, stability. I can just reef on it all the way left or right, and I know it's not going to flip over and do this, but uh, this thing has some serious speed. I think if I worked on strengthening this up a little bit and um, keeping the back end of the boat flat instead of uh, contoured like this, I think we could get some serious speed and, uh, and a little more stability out of it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll show you some of my parts.